Good evening and welcome to the Coon Rapids City Council meeting for Monday, January 4th, 2021. If you could please rise and join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please call the roll. Oh, never mind. We're out of order tonight. Oh. No, we're perfect order. Let's start with the oath of office. Ms. Lensmeyer. And who do we have first? Oh, we're, we have uh, Council Member Brad Griscoviak. Please raise your right hand. I, Brad Griscoviak, do solemnly swear. I, Brad Griscoviak, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of the Office of City Council Member. The duties of the Office of City Council Member. For the City of Coon Rapids. For the City of Coon Rapids. In the County of Anoka. In the County of Anoka. In the State of Minnesota. In the State of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and abilities. Congratulations. You. <laughs> um, you're doing Councilmember Ray Rauer via Zoom. Is that how that's going to work? Okay. Are you ready? Please raise your right hand. I carry Ray Rauer. I carry Ray Rauer. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of the Office of City Council Member. The duties of the Office of City Council Member. For the City of Coon Rapids. For the City of Coon Rapids. And the County of Anoka. And the County of Anoka. And the State of Minnesota and the state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Going in order, we're up to Council Member Geisler, Ward 4. Please raise your right hand. I, Jennifer Geisler, do solemnly swear. I, Jennifer Geisler, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, and discharge faithfully, and discharge faithfully, the duties of the Office of City Council Member, the duties of the Office of City Council Member, for the City of Coon Rapids, for the City of Coon Rapids, in the County of Anoka, in the County of Anoka, in the State of Minnesota, in the State of Minnesota, to the best of my judgment and ability, to the best of my judgment and abilities. Congratulations. Thank you. Council Member at Large, Pat Carlson. Please raise your right hand. I, Pat Carlson, do solemnly swear. I, Pat Carlson, do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And discharge faithfully. And discharge faithfully. The duties of the Office of City Council Member. The duties of the Office of City Council Member. For the City of Coon Rapids. For the City of Coon Rapids. In the County of Anoka. In the County of Anoka. In the State of Minnesota. In the State of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> Congratulations, all. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Now, can we call the roll? Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Now that we have council members. <laughs> council Member Griscoviak. Here. Council Member Ray Rauer. Here. Council Member Demmer. Here. Council Member Geisler. Here. Council Member Johnson. Council Member Carlson. Here. Mayor Cook. Here. One absent Johnson. Thank you. Uh, next item on our agenda is to adopt this evening's agenda. So moved. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Demmer to adopt this evening's agenda. Is there um, any discussion or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
And that motion carries. So the agenda is adopted. And we are on to council business. The, um, basically the five items how we establish how, the, how we're going to be working the next year. Uh, the first will be to designate the council secretary. Um, each year the council enters into an agreement for recording secretarial services for meeting minutes. In 1994, the council entered into an agreement with Time Saver Offsite Secretarial for recording and preparation of meeting minutes. This agreement has been extended annually. Um, they have submitted the attached addendum to the Recording Secretary Service Agreement for 2021. Yes, the addendum does reflect a rate increase of between 2 and 2.5% two and to the base rate, depending upon the length of the meeting, and this will result in a small increase for secretarial services, but the increase can be accommodated in the approved budget. Staff will continue with the modified format of the minutes and only include discussion and not staff reports, which will minimize the cost of the... Uh, uh, minute production, minute production. <laughs> I'm not sure what context we're using that there. But. And this is uh, not a consent yet, so. Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Geisler. I will move adoption of resolution 21 1 designating Time Saver Off Suite Site Secretarial Incorporated as Council Secretary for 2021 and approve addendum for to recording secretary service agreement. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Griscoviak. Any discussion on that? I was trying to find a really grandiose word for them to type in just to get them excited that they got to do something, <laughs> uh, but I couldn't think of one fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> Next meeting. Okay. So with that, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item three uh, are the council rules of procedure. Um, as a reminder for council, the city manager is authorized to prepare, prepare a list of consent agenda items, but the mayor or any council member may request that a particular consent agenda item be removed from the consent list and placed on the regular agenda. This action should be taken at the time the agenda is formally adopted. The item will then be placed for consideration immediately after adoption of the remaining consent agenda items. As always, should the council have any questions regarding items posted on the final agenda, contact staff, and we will provide additional information before or during the council meeting. Um, we're looking at maintaining the same order of the meeting, um, the same 16 item order down below. So if anybody has any questions, otherwise looking for a motion. Hi, Your Honor. Council Member Demmer. I uh, move to adopt resolution 21-2, establishing council rules of procedure, and adopt the addendum to resolution 21-2, definitions and explanations of city council order of business. Second. Motion by Demmer, second by Griscoviak. Any discussion on that? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> and that motion carries. Item four is the designation of the official newspaper. The Noka County Union Herald has submitted a proposal to serve as the city's legal newspaper for 2021. Their publication rates will remain the same as in 2020 at a rate of 1075 per column inch. The Herald meets all requirements for serving as the legal newspaper. Do we even have a, is there even a plan B anymore? Is there, a, is there another one that bids on it? Mr. Mayor, Council Members, the Star Tribune did submit something at last minute uh, in the late in the day on Friday okay. when I checked my email, but it doesn't compare and it's not local, something that Council has wanted to stay with the local newspaper. So okay. they are an option. Should we miss a deadline or the publication dates don't work for any reason, we can use them. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Council Member Griscoviak, I'll make a motion to adopt. Resolution 21.3, designating the Anoka County Union Herald as the official newspaper for 2021. Second. Motion by Griscoviak, second by Demmer. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Item five are board and commission appointments. Um, each year we, uh, we approve the annual appointments of members of the city's boards and commissions. And uh, we have, let's see, we have six vacancies on the Arts Commission, but we are reappointing and uh, 
uh, and as chair, Mary Ann Keene, and reappointing John, is it Cacon, maybe? Um, for, uh, reappointing them to the Arts Commission. The Board of Adjustment and Appeals, which has one vacancy. Um, we're appointing, uh, reappointing Erin Vandalindi as chair and Tracy Wagon, uh, reappointment to the board. Um, Fire and Civil Service Commission, um, Al Hofstead chair, Caroline LeCourcier, which is a new appointment, and Tracy Wagon is a new appointment to that. Those are both new appointments to that commission. Historical Commission, uh, Luann Koskinen, Chair, Scott Sleeper, and Boo Mills, reappointments. Uh, Parks and Recreation Commission, there are no terms that expired in 2020 uh, due to the appointments made to this commission mid-year. Uh, we're reappointing Neil Livermore as Chair. On the Planning Commission, uh, Wayne Schwartz as Chair, and reappointing Mary Schmalke as one of the commissioners and reappointing Kathy Casey as the commissioner. Uh, Safety Commission, there are five vacancies. We're appointing uh, Al Hofstad chair, and then reappointing Wayne Baumgart, Maurice McKee, and Terry Hedberg to the commission. On the Sustainability Commission, uh, appoint the appointment is for Stacy Demmer chair, and then reappointing Chris Backus and Marcia Bodino. And that's all of that. I'll take this one, Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. Okay, so we'll take them all. So A, we'll adopt resolution 21-4, approving annual appointments to the Arts Commission. Adopt resolution 21-5, approving annual appointments to the Board of Adjustments and Appeals. Item C, adopt resolution 21-6, approving annual appointments to the Firefighter Civil Service Commission. D, adopt resolution 21-7, approving annual appointments to the Historical Commission. E, adopt resolution 21-8, approving annual appointments to the Parks Commission. E, adopt resolution 21-9, approving annual appointments to the Planning Commission. F, adopt resolution 21-10, approving annual appointments to the Safety Commission. And G, adopt resolution 21-11, approving annual appointments to the Sustainability Commission. Second. second. Motion by Geisler, second by Griscoviak. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. Yeah, um, so a couple of different things with this. Number one, I want to thank everybody who volunteers on our commissions. It's an invaluable service that we have in the community and I truly appreciate everybody who spends their time and energy and gives back to the city. Um, and note that there are vacancies. So if you have an interest, please put forth your, your application. And then the third thing, <laughs> um, because the commissions are so important to our, our community, one of the things I know that we've been talking about and have on our a work, working session, hopefully in 2021, is to relook at our commission structures. Do we have the right commissions, the, the right memberships, the right chair structure, all of that. And so um, we'll be looking at this hopefully um, in the next year to see are there different commissions or other things that we may also need. So stay tuned. There may be other things to participate in. Thank you. Um, yeah, well said. They do the yeoman work and the council wouldn't be able to function without, without all of the efforts of those commissions and all those commissioners. Um, yes, and, and if anybody is interested in filling any of those vacancies, go to the Coon Rapids City's website and you can make an, an application through the state, city clerk's office. Correct, Ms. Lensmeyer? That is correct. They can email it to us at clerk at coonrapidsmn.gov or give us a call here at City Hall and we'll help them out. Excellent, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, should we make a note to amend the attendance? Here. Council Member Johnson <laughs> arrived at 714. Got it. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. You're, you're just in time. We were about to appoint you to a bunch of yeah. stuff. <laughs> 
now you know why I came. <laughs> Item six on this evening's agenda is the council appointments. Um, so how do you suggest that we go through this? Because all of the appoint well, the appointments are made, the motion is made the way they're written, or do you want the motioner to make it with the names? It seems like it's happened that way in the past. Mayor Cook, this is more put together this year than in past because you had the work session to discuss. In years past, we've asked you to hold the discussion at this meeting and then fill in the blanks. As written would be fine if you're comfortable with the appointments that we've proposed. Okay, so I'll just I'll go through and, and read them off there then. I just didn't if they were going to have to be all reread again. I didn't want to. No. Okay. Um, okay, so we're looking to appoint members to represent the city on several organizations, and we're looking at the Anoka County Joint Law Enforcement Council, and that's Council Member Johnson and Chief Brad Wise with Council Member Carlson and Council Member. Ray Rauer as alternates, Anoka Hennem Community Education Advisory Council, Council Member Griscoviak, Council Member Demer as the alternate, Local Government Information Systems, Logis, uh, City Manager Matt Stemwedel, IT Manager Dave Sack, and Council Member Geisler as the alternate, Minnesota Metro North Tourism, TC Gateway, Mayor Cook and City Manager Matt Stemwedel, Schwann's Super Rink Joint Board, City Manager Matt Stemwedel, and Ice Center Manager Bill Ganser. Council Member Geisler is the alternate. Excuse me. Anoka County Fire Protection Council, Council Member Griscoviak, Council Members Johnson and Carlson as alternates. Coon Rapids Fire Relief Association is Council Member Geisler, Chief John Piper, and Finance Director Fran Hansen. North Metro Mayors Association, Mayor Cook and City Manager Matt Stemwedel as required by association bylaws. Youth First Community of Promise, Recreation Supervisor Ryan Gunderson and Mayor Cook, Councilmember Carlson alternate, and then the Community Strength Foundation, Mayor Cook, Councilmember Griscoviak as the alternate. If there's any questions or discussion, otherwise if somebody wants to grab those. Oh boy. Awesome, thank you uh, Councilmember <laughs> Demmer. All right, uh, move to adopt resolution 2112, appointing chief of police and one other voting member to the Anoka County Joint Law Enforcement Council. Uh, move resolution 21-13, appointing a delegate and alternate to the Anoka Hennepin District 11 Community Education Advisory Council. Uh, move to adopt resolution 21-14, appointing a representative and alternate to the local government information systems. Uh, adopt resolution 21-15, appointing representatives to the Minnesota North Metro North Tourism Twin Cities Gateway. Adopt resolution 21-16, appointing representatives to the Schwann Super Rink Joint Board. Adopt resolution 21-17, appointing a representative to the Anoka County Fire Protection Council. Adopt resolution 21-18, appointing three members to the Coon Rapids Fire Relief Association. Adopt resolution 21-19, appointing two representatives to the North Metro Mayors Association. Adopt resolution 21-20, appointing representatives to the Youth First Community of Promise. And adopt resolution 21-23, Appointing representative to the Community Strength Foundation. Second all of those. Motion by Demmer, second by Johnson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And now we are on to approval of the minutes from the December 15th, 2020 meeting. Mayor? Councilmember Griscoviak. I'll make a motion to adopt the minutes of December 15, 2020. Second. Motion by Griscoviak, second by Geisler. Any discussion or corrections? Mr. Mayor, would Councilmember Ray Robert and I also abstain on that then? Correct. Okay. Yes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries two abstentions, Carlson and Ray Rauer. Uh, we have one item on our consent agenda, 
and that is to accept a sanitary sewer easement from the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the City of Coon Rapids. Um, in December, the Housing and Redevelopment Authority in and for the City of Coon Rapids and the City approved a 20-foot sanitary sewer easement in the Port Riverwalk development area. However, after further review, it was determined a 40-foot easement would be needed instead. The HRA approved the 40-foot easement at their meeting prior to tonight's meeting, and the Council is now being asked to accept the 40-foot easement. Anybody have any questions? Or? Hi, Your Honor. Councilmember Demmer. Considering asking to move it off of the consent agenda, but I'll approve the in, move to approve the entire consent agenda consisting <laughs> of this one item. I will second that. Motion and a second to adopt and approve the, con the entire consent agenda. <laughs> Any discussion or questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. You didn't want it to have its own line item. Yeah. <laughs> this only happens about once a year, right. so I've got to poke Matt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have nothing under old business, and we have three items under new business. The first one is item nine on this evening's agenda, and that is to consider resolution 21-22, approving the year-end budget appropriations. Um, Mr. Stemwell, do you want me to read these things, or do you want to hit the highlights, or...? Sure. Mayor and Council, I'll just uh, mention a couple of things, um, and if there's any questions, certainly I can answer those. Um, each year, at, both at this time and later on, when we actually do the official year-end uh, for the 2020 budget, uh, we are required by our charter to sort of estimate what we're going to be at year-end for essentially planning purposes and to, um, to amend the budget so that everything equals out. The biggest thing this year, or I should say for 2020, was the impact of the CARES Act dollars. Uh, we received $4.8 million through the CARES Act uh, this summer, which is a pretty large chunk of money to receive uh, for any city budget. So that has the biggest influence over uh, what you're being presented with tonight. Um, I will mention in typical years, not at, at this point, but at a later point, whatever we have in excess of our 45% fund balance policy, we would typically sweep over into the facilities construction fund. At this point, as we talked about during the budget process, we'd actually um, recommend that council just carry over a larger uh, fund balance in 2021 to sort of buffer against any potential changes. And if some of those changes don't come to fruition, if we don't see revenues decrease, things of that nature, um, then we, would, we could have another conversation about how to utilize those dollars either for future budgetary scenarios, for facility projects, or what have you. So that decision you're not being presented with tonight, this just really estimates where things are coming in at the end of 2020. Um, that'll be closed out once we get a few months into the year. Excellent. Any questions for Mr. Stemwaddle? Uh, Your Honor. Councilmember Demmer? Um, so I, I think I know the answer, but... Um, some of the numbers are pretty big swings. Are any of them not CARES or COVID related that you would like to explain? I would say in, for the most part in a roundabout way, everything was COVID related in, in 2020. And I say that because a lot of the uh, savings we had throughout the year were the result of the pandemic. So for example, we had some positions that we held off on hiring for a while or even through the entire year because we wanted to see where the economic climate was headed and what the impacts were to our budget. We had a lot of areas that we didn't expend funds because they were related to travel and conferences and all sorts of things that just didn't happen in 2020. Um, so there are a lot of savings there. I would point out that we actually had a pretty good year from a development perspective. Um, so the revenue came in strong from that standpoint as well. Um, often the case in local government is your impacts uh, come later. There's a lag effect because property values, whether it's residential or, or in this case, maybe more concern related to retail and commercial and things of that nature, take about a year and a half because of the property value system. Uh, the other concern we had was local government aid, uh, although the state's budget's looking a little better than it was six months ago when we started developing our budget. Uh, you never know what could happen there as things progress. So uh, I would say that in a, in a lot of ways, we tend to have savings from one year to the next anyway. That was just multiplied in 2020 because of CARES Act and then the pandemic. And a couple of specific ones. Um, I was surprised to see an overage on business licenses. And it's, it's a very small number, but I would have expected it to be a much larger negative number. From the, uh, the licenses are renewed, and Joan, correct me if I'm wrong, sort of 
uh, at the end of a year going into the next year. And so I don't think those impacts would have been felt yet. Right? Correct. Yeah. But I thought we specifically reduced some of the licensing because, for example, a, a group bought the line license for one capacity but functionally operated at a much reduced capacity. Sure. Uh, we did and will reimburse ourselves through the CARES Act for the grants okay. for the um, uh, reimbursement we had for the uh, alcohol licenses. We did 25%, uh, I think it was. Um, and so all that will be CARES Act eligible. And then, Joan, I don't know if there are other revenues you want to mention. Surprisingly, folks were still doing business despite the pandemic, so we really haven't seen much of an impact at this point. Okay, so there weren't a whole bunch of closures that resulted in licensing not being paid? Not yet. Not I'm yet. waiting to see the impact of that come okay. the opening when we and can then open back up. The only other one was just sort of a curiosity. The investment income, we hit exactly on our estimate for our, our investment income? Can you guys run my investment portfolio? <laughs> like what, what happened? How, how does that hit exactly? That just seems um, weird. I, Mayor and Council, I could get a maybe more specific answer from our finance director. Um, however, we're very conservative with uh, the types of investments that we're legally able to make and that we practically make. And so I'd say they're a little more predictable, predictable because we're talking about um, low return investments that uh, don't have the volatility. Certainly in this past year, we didn't experience some of the volatility, but we know the return's gonna be pretty small. Um, why it ended up exactly, uh, maybe Fran's just that good, I'm not sure. <laughs> or maybe it was luck, I don't know, yeah, one of those two. Okay, thank yeah. you. Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson. I'd move adoption of resolution number 21-22, reappointing, reapportioning funds within the 2020 general fund budget and amending the 2020 and 2021 budgets. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Geisler. Discussion? Mr. Mayor. Councilmember Griscoviak. Could I ask the city manager, of the excess, what is the total amount going into the facilities construction fund? Mayor Council, at this point, none of it. Um, so tonight before you, you're not being asked to sweep any of those dollars into the fund. That would come later when we do close out. 2021, so we could have a separate conversation about about what to do there. Um, as I discussed during the budgeting process, for now, I would probably suggest to hold on to all of it in fund balance, and we can make a decision at the end of 2021 okay. about what to do with any excess that we wouldn't want to carry over into 2022. Um, so we, you don't have to make an immediate decision on what, if any, dollars to put into that fund. Got it. So what we'll wind up with is a, is a fund balance over 45% Correct. by doing this tonight. Okay, I got it. Well, yeah, and tonight this is really the estimate. The, the final decision usually comes in March, April time frame. Sure. Um, once we know all the bills have come in and we've had the time to process everything and we know where the year end actually was, um, but by charter we actually have to do this estimate for the year. Understood. Thank yep. you. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. We are on to item 10 on this evening's agenda. That's to consider resolutions 21-7 sub 8 and 21-8 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for the 2021 well rehab booster upgrades and authorizing solicitation of bids. Staff proposes continuing a regular rotation for rehabilitation of the city's 24 wells and nine booster pumps. The 2021 program will focus on well numbers 19, 22, and 23, and booster pumps uh, numbers four and five, located in the West Water Treatment Plant. As in years past, staff requested a consultant proposal from Short Elliott Hendrickson, uh, incorporated under its master consulting agreement to provide professional engineering design, bidding and construction administration, and inspection services for the project. Uh, we're being asked to accept plans and specifications for the 2021 well rehabilitation program and the West Water Treatment Plant booster upgrades and authorize solicitation of bids. Um, and they're looking to have all of this done and uh, completed uh, between July and August of this year. So questions? Anything you want to, Mr. Stemwedel. Mayor and Council. I saw Mr. Himmer wasn't here, so yeah. I wasn't sure if we were gonna get <laughs> no, anything. No, I mean, well stated. <laughs> I, I'm gonna mention just a couple other things uh, related to this. Uh, we do this in an eight year cycle, and actually this year will be the eighth year of our eighth, eight year cycle. And so in the past seven years, and then going into this year, we'll have gone through all of our well houses and upgraded the equipment. 
um, with the theory being that now when we start the process over again, um, since we've kept up and done the preventative maintenance, the, the expense to kind of do this again for the next eight years should be less because we've kept up really nicely with maintenance um, and replacement of the equipment that's needed. Another thing I'll remind council is the estimates are based on, I'll call it worst case scenario, that if they had to go in there and replace just about all of the equipment, this is probably what it would cost. As council's familiar with, typically they go in there and they don't need to do nearly as many things as they, uh, they, they predict that they might, but they always have to sort of plan for the worst, get in there, find out what they need to do, and uh, the, the budget amount will be more than enough to uh, fund the projects that are needed in there. Uh, but we have to do that just in case that all the work is uh, provided in the scope of the services that we're requesting. And, and since you mentioned that, the budget impact mm -hmm. on this, the 2021 Water Fund contains $325,000 for well rehabilitation and $725,000 for improvements to booster pumps at the West Water Treatment Plant. And these funds are anticipated to cover all associated project costs. So. Mr. Mayor. Council Member Geisler. I'll make a motion to adopt resolutions number 21-7 sub 8 and 21-8 sub 8, accepting plans and specifications for the 2021 well rehabilitation and West Water Treatment Plant boosters four and five upgrades and authorize the solicitation of bids. Second. Motion by Geisler, second by Johnson. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, item 11, uh, there it is, is to consider resolution 21-21, designating official depositories and investment collateral management procedures State statutes allow the city council to authorize the treasurer or chief financial officer to designate depositories for city funds and to manage the collateral for those funds. Uh, the resolution designates U.S. Bank as the official depository and authorizes the finance director to designate additional depositories for investment purposes, approve wire transfer agreements with the depositories, and manage the collateral as prescribed by state statute. And this will be our first full year with U.S. Bank, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Mr. Stemmel, anything else you wanted to talk about on that? Nope, that's no? it. All right. Anybody have any questions? Or? Nope. I'll make a motion uh, to good. adopt Resolution 21-21, designating depositories and investment collateral management procedures. Second. Motion by Johnson, second by Demmer. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. And we're on to the open mic public comment, but I, <laughs> once, once the entire Carlson crew left, you know, it sort of emptied out. <laughs> Anybody else online? There's, Mayor Council, there's nobody on Zoom okay. other than staff and council member. Right all right. Um, I don't have any reports on previous open mics, and we are on to other business. Um, Council Member, uh, Mr. Stemmel, you sent out a message today that they were going to be out replowing and uh, cleaning up some of the, the loose snow on the streets and the... Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we did get a few emails, phone calls, that sort of thing about whether or not the crews would be out cleaning up streets primarily, although sidewalks was brought up as well. And today the streets crew was out cleaning up the residential roads, they'll be clearing bridge decks tomorrow and sidewalks as well. Uh, the, the snow we had gave us a little base on all of those surfaces and with the warm sun we got on Saturday and Sunday and even today, a lot of melt and a lot of slush that uh, is annoying as you're trying to go down your residential street, especially if you're in a, on a sunny street. Um, we are also catching up on some of the trails. I think they all got hit after the most recent snowfall uh, for the most part. If, they're, if you're, uh, you see a section that's missing, please let us know about it. There are some small segments of park trails that we don't plow if it's sort of a in a park interconnected trail just for that park, but if it's part of the regional trail system and so forth, we should be hitting those up. And if we haven't yet, please let us know. And keep in mind too that uh, we're not the only ones who maintain trails in Coon Rapids, so we'll help you out. It may not be a trail uh, or a section of road that we plow, but we'll certainly work with the county or whomever is necessary to make sure that that gets covered. So um, as usual, if you have questions, uh, please contact City Hall or Public Works um, if there are issues, whether it's snow, your mailbox gets hit, things of that nature, we're happy to follow up with you and see what the issue is. 
So Mr. Stemwell, can't they just use the report it function on yes. the city website for doing that? <laughs> they can certainly do that as well, yes. They can use the reported feature and address those same issues. Okay. Your Honor. Councilmember Johnson. So I just wanted to follow up on that, and I appreciate, Mr. Stemwell, you talking about the, the trails and, and the sidewalks. I, I, I did get a fair number of calls and comments on, on the sidewalks in particular. Mm -hmm. I was out on the trails myself in Robinson Park and in Wintercrest Park and some others, and, and the trails look fantastic. Um, but I, I did have a number of neighbors talk about along Foley and especially the bridge over Foley, um, that people weren't able to make it across. And, and in fact, um, even when I was out checking it out, there was a fella who decided to, he couldn't make it uh, with his bicycle, so he brought his bicycle out into traffic and was walking across the bridge in traffic. And I just would like you to address briefly, with respect to the bridges that go over Highway 10, Whose responsibility is that? Is that the city or is that the county or is it a combination? Uh, Mayor and Council, it's a combination. Uh, there are a number that the city does. They, uh, those don't occur typically until up to a few days after a major snowfall event. And the reason being is it requires specialized equipment to remove that. We can't create a wake to push that snow off onto the freeway or the highway. And so we have to come in and be, essentially scoop it up, put it in the dump truck and, and truck it off. And so it's a labor intensive process. Um, that we bring crews in and we don't, uh, when we do snow plowing events, we'll call our, our crews in, whether it's at midnight, 2 a.m., 4 a.m., to do the critical roads, the residential roads, but we don't bring them in on overtime to clear bridge decks unless there was a unique circumstance, that sort of thing. So all that equipment comes in sometime after that to clear those and move on. But it, it, it does take a little bit of a lag before we get there. Yeah, and the more collaboration we can have where we have joint responsibility with the county to, I know we talk about this every year. We actually often have a workshop on it where we talk about it, but I just want the public to know that it's something that's on all of our minds as well um, as theirs too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When, and it's been just this weird thing too with all the snow and now the warm weather and so anything loose is coming back up again and but yep. yeah. I noticed that the mailboxes along Foley are definitely a problem for this clearing that sidewalk. Oh it's just terrible. It would be nice to figure out what how to get those out of the middle of that sidewalk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you also, got any ideas, let me <laughs> <right>? <laughs> bring them forward. Yeah. Yeah. I actually was drove your neighborhood on Sunday because I had one of your Mm -hmm. um, a friend of mine that lives over there talking about all the missed areas yep. you know there's a, a car was out there or mm -hmm. in one case there's a there's a remodeler's trailer sitting alongside of the road that's plowed out and around and you're going I don't think that's probably should be there yeah. right. <laughs> so all right very good any other questions on snow removal all right other business we have Chief Wise, I had a, I thank you for your response today. Um, I had somebody write to me about fireworks. We had an inordinate amount of fireworks going off New Year's Eve from starting like early evening until, I don't know, whatever time I fell asleep finally. Well, you got to party at home these days, you know. So, <laughs> so if, if it's bothering somebody, they should call 911, I would imagine. Yeah, or, Mr. Mayor, uh, frankly, Councilmember Johnson might be spot on because it, it seemed different to me, too, that in previous years I don't recall fireworks on New Year's Eve being a big deal. Uh, but, yeah, there was a lot of it. And for sure we would respond to complaints that are related to fireworks, and the officers will go out and, and investigate and um, hopefully achieve voluntary compliance, but they would cite if, if appropriate, but keep in mind is, is that New Year's Eve is a busy night in general, so we're not just gonna stumble across fireworks on our own, the officers won't. Um, they're looking for impaired drivers, which there were, even though people were going to private parties and not so many bars and restaurants being open, clearly. Um, so that would be, safety is a priority, but we definitely would handle noise complaints. All right, I'm sure Councilmember Guys, or it was the same for you, most of the fireworks by me were in Champlin. Yes. <laughs> Other side of the river. <laughs> and it just echoes. All right. Any other business to come before council this evening? Mr. Stemwell, anything? Uh, no? no, I was just going to mention the snow plowing, so thanks for the cue. All right. And no golf course updates, so do you think we're going to be uh, open for business on the 11th? Any, any hints at all? Uh, Mayor and council, yeah, I don't know any more than uh, what was mentioned today that it sounds like some expansion of indoor dining is 
Coming soon at what capacity, I'm not sure. It'll also affect the uh, golf simulator operations at Bunker Hills as that's been shut down um, during this time too. And I think there are a number of other things in the city that may or may not be impacted by this update. One, one thing we were talking about recently is the warming houses at the outdoor ice rinks. The ice rinks themselves are now open and the question will be whether or not the warming houses can actually open uh, or whether they should be open given that sort of a transient nature and uh, mm -hmm. small spaces, that sort of thing. So for now, well, we don't plan to open them um, and we, they may not get open this season. So we will have benches and biffs and things of that nature out at those facilities, but whether or not the, the rooms themselves actually get open is a whole other question. Right. Um, so we're, we're hoping for something at the uh, event center for sure, but we'll find out what that is. We gave it our best shot, best shot last week. We made it an hour on the patio at Alloy. Yeah. <laughs> it's yep. like, okay, I'm done now. It's, I'm cold. <laughs> All right. Any other business to come before council this evening? No. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh, Motion sorry. by Geisler. Second by Carlson to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We're adjourned. Aye.